I'm in my zone, I'm feeling it. Stop blowing my buzz, quit killing it. So buy another round and try to shut us down. By the hour ago, but we still in this bitch. We still in this. We still in this bitch. We still in this. We just turn the shit up loud and buy another round. Try to shut us down. By the hour ago, but we still in this bitch. Um, I know you can come to me talk, so I'm going to go ahead and do this interview. Um, first question is, Atlanta continues to produce some of the top artists and producers on the charts. So how important is it for artists to support local events like ATL, Big Bad, in your opinion? I feel like it's very important for us as a community to to build together because I tell you what, man, like like coming up in Atlanta and, and seeing the rest of the world, it's like whenever you get a city like this, man, I hate when, when there's somebody talented and then they, they leave and go somewhere else and, and build up another city or another community. It's like, let's build us up. Like, we so fucking talented, we are the new Motown. Like, when they look back, on music 10, 20, 50 years from now, they will look at this time period the same way that they look at Motown, and we have to really embrace that. And like, and, and, and another thing, like, I, something else that we gotta realize too, as, as Atlanta artists, we gotta embrace ourselves more and realize that what we're doing musically is fucking soul. Like, like a lot of times people say, man, there ain't no soul no more. Niggas ain't talking about shit. I can't understand what the fuck niggas saying. Man, I was in the fucking elevator and this rock song came on. I didn't know what the fuck they were saying. It's like, it's just how you look at it. Like, look at look at the 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 power that we have, man. Like, you can't like a fucking opera singer can't sing what Young Thug sing, but Young Thug can't sing what an opera singer sing. So you can't base your ability off of you know what I'm saying. You gotta know what you're good at. Is basically what I'm saying. But I feel like we just have to build up and, and stay a close knit community and stay. You know, doing shit like this. Support your local artists, support your local producers, support your local businesses, you know? Okay, speaking of supporting your local artists, you have a new label called No Genre, correct? Um, and you, one of the artists that I know personally is Scotty ATL that you have on the label. So can you tell me how the label idea came about and how you went about selecting the artists? Yes, um, but first off, no genre artists, y'all stand up, man. Let, let these folks get a good look at you. Uh, my guy right here, my guy right here on the cell phone, cool as hell, this is Young Javi. You'll be seeing him soon. What's up? <laughs> this is Jake Lambo to the left in the hoodie. Jake Lambo, Stoner Child. Jock Beats in the No Genre Scully. Jock Beats, man, talented producer, man. Super crazy artist, man, just on all levels. London J in the back, what's up? Uh, this is Lindsay. It's Lindsay, baby. Right on. And um, me, me, Playboy Trey, B. Rich, and T. J. Make up no genre, man. We are the, you know, we the, the. This is the same team I had since the beginning, man. And Scotty, ATL, is uh, he he couldn't be here because he's on the road uh, with Jaren Ben, you know, ripping up the. Uh, yeah, yeah, he in New York now, so yeah. And what is the vision for no genre? Where do you see it going? <laughs> no genre, man. Uh, it can go anywhere. I mean, no genre can can really, you know. I feel like me as an artist, man. My career is, you know, that's the theme of my career. That's the theme of my music. You know, all the battles that I had to fight to to for people to not only accept but to allow me to be whatever type of artist I wanted to be, like the, the battles I had to fight to like, you know, play the guitar in a fucking hood ass club and niggas was like, what the fuck is this nigga doing up here? <laughs> like, we you know what like running, like I remember one time I was in love, we was somewhere, man, um, and, and a whole show, man, this nigga was flicking me off the whole show. And this was back when B-Rich was, was my DJ, like B-Rich was the DJ. Well, he's the instant replay DJ. <laughs> And so when haters came on, people were like, I want everybody to put that motherfucker right there, put them middle fingers up, and then we dropped haters. And motherfuckers was turning up to it, and then we had to like leave after the show because niggas trying to fight and shit. Like, just like all, oh, you know what I mean? Like, just, I just really had to constantly, consistently 
you know, just, you know, fight an uphill battle to, to get people to understand, like, I don't have to be just one type of artist. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, I feel like I have many different personalities. You know, some days I like fucking going on the internet and researching some nerd shit. One day I want to go to the strip club. One day I, I may be in the fashion and shit. One day I may feel like going to church. I mean, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's okay to be a multi faceted person. You don't have to be just a street nigga. You don't have to just be a nerd. You don't have to just be, you How know what I'm saying? do you stay inspired? Like, what inspires you? I mean, being around other artists inspires me. Like, going to movies and, and concerts and, you know, you know, working with different artists. You know, just anybody who's better at doing, <laughs> anybody who's better at doing what you do than you are will always inspire you, you know? Like, you know, for me, like, I, I always, like, I'm a fan of, of the OGs and the, and the people who've been doing it, the veterans, and I'm a, just as much as I'm a fan of the new niggas. So, you know, I kind of, you know, learn from everybody. Um, we got a lot of producers out here tonight, and then you produced as well. What do you think it takes, what are the qualities that make up a good producer as well as a good song? I mean, a producer, I feel like, you know, the, the term producer is like somebody who who produces a product, you know, whether that be, you know, you yourself physically making the beat or whether you, you know, you may make a beat, get a string player to come in or get a bass player to come in or, you know, if you do it yourself or if you can do it yourself, you get somebody else to do it still. I mean, it's just however route you go producing, that's what a producer is and, and it's different than, you know, just somebody who make who makes beats, you know, like a producer is somebody who really can can give somebody a sound. And every producer can't make every type of beat. You know, some producers are are, are you know geared in certain areas, but knowing what you're good at and knowing your weaknesses is really what makes you a strong producer, you know, and and just having a consistent sound, I think, you know, not not every producer you know, makes a, a consistent sound where it's like, all right, I know that snare, I know that beat, I know that tag, that's that type of beat. You know, that's that's one way to do it, or you could just be a, 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 a chameleon and just do whatever. How, as an artist, how do you like to receive beats? Do you like to be in the studio? Do you like to receive them by email? How do you like for people to approach you? I mean, the best way, the best way to reach me, um, in terms of just beats, you know, I'm not always in a, in a situation where I can really listen to it. Like, you know, just stop what I'm doing and listen to it. But, you know, I have my email, Bob Beats at Gmail. I always check my beats. Um, but as far as like the best way, the best way for a producer, I feel, is to produce in the studio with somebody, like making the song with them. Hey, why the fuck did y'all come out of y'all gonna talk? You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers talk, get the fuck out, you know what I'm saying? Cause motherfuckers here to listen. Straight the fuck up. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> That's the rich. <laughs> so uh, you know, as a producer, the best way to to really you know get on, I mean, I know everybody wants to get heard. Everybody, you I, you got fucking dope tracks. And you know it, and you you, you know you, you get tired of handing out flash drives and CDs and and nothing coming from it. Like the best way is to get in with the artist and produce and make it from scratch, show them what you can do, and and, and really really make a sound. And and it's not just you can't just get it just from one session and just make one dope song. Like go in for a week, you know, really build something and and make a sound. And, and that way you can. You can put your DNA in and, 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 and put your tag on it and, and everybody know, ah oh, yeah, that's that's the sound. Like that came from that camp. They made that happen from the ground up. They ain't, they didn't go, you know what I mean? They didn't go get a cosign, like they just really made And what's your creative process when you go into the studio to record? <laughs> well, some producers and artists they like to have a, a certain atmosphere when they create. Some uh, producers and artists, they, um, 
they like to be in the studio all day and just try to figure it out, you know, like let the creative process kind of come to them. Like, do you have a certain, you know, um, I guess method to how you come up with uh, different sounds as well as uh, your songwriting? I mean, the best thing for me is is to know when to go in the studio. I mean, everybody has a different method, man. Some people like London J, that nigga record every motherfucking day. Like, that nigga don't never take no days off. And like, it, it's, it's, it's different for, for other artists. Like, like me, I, I like to go in the studio when I, when I feel inspired to go in the studio. Like, cause I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real compulsive person. Like, I make music, like, cause I have to, like, even if I wasn't where I'm at now, I'll still make it. Like, it's like an itch. I just have to keep doing it. So, you know, whenever I, I, I run out of ideas, I gotta just put it down. And and when you go in, when you wanna go in, you'll always have something to say, you'll always have something to produce. But for me, I gotta just know when I'm not feeling it and like, you know, just let go of it for a minute and come back to it. But... Preaching on Easter Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, ultimately, Ultimately, man, like, if you got an idea or something, a fucking, even if you just moody, some niggas just, you know, just be moody during the day. Just go, go to the fucking studio, like, you're, like it's gonna come out. And you're just, okay. That concludes the interview portion of tonight.